So I want to talk quickly about kind of what I would typically carry in the backcountry when I go out uh, and kind of talk to you about some of the ways that some of this can be improvised to use for first aid uh, in conjunction with your first aid kit. Uh, going back to what we said before, you know, improvising on purpose is not something that I ever plan on doing. Uh, I plan on improvising to back up and supplement the stuff that I had when I was prepared for emergencies and that's why I want to kind of go into other things that you can use and how they apply and supplement and kind of augment your first aid kit that you're actually carrying. Uh, when I, and just like when I'm making a wilderness emergency kit or a trauma kit, I begin with the needs that I'm trying to provide for in mind, and that's what I'm going to use when I'm thinking about packing those. So for my everyday stuff that I'm taking out, for whatever reason I'm going out into the woods, I think about what my metabolic needs are, uh, kind of what my priorities for uh, survival in some type of emergency would be, and I make sure that I pack to provide for those needs. So beginning with the needs in mind, the system that I use is just called basically seven essential kits and a good knife. That's just kind of a way that I remember when I'm packing everything up. Do I have what I need for fire? Do I have what I need for shelter, water, food, first aid, navigation, signal, and then tools. A good knife is not just a good knife. It's a good knife and maybe some other tools and a way to maintain those things. So within those kits, uh, everything that I need to provide for is there. If you look at it from the survival priorities perspective, you know, first aid for life threats being one, that's the first aid kit. Then core temperature control, which is a function of your ability to make fire in a lot of cases, your shelter system, and of course the clothing that you chose to wear into the backcountry to begin with. That's all part of your core temperature control. Then we're talking about hydration. And granted, I can go a long time without food, but I don't like to go a long time without food. We eat three times a day, most of us, and we're used to that. So, you know, it doesn't take long for, as, even though you can live a long time without food, it doesn't take long before it starts to impair your cognitive reasoning, your cognitive function. Uh, it doesn't take long before you become hangry uh, and start making poor decisions. So, food is part of the kit that I take out. I don't go into the wilderness with no food and just when I get hungry start making primitive traps and wait three days to catch something. That's not something I do. Uh, so food is taken care of. Then of course first aid would be talking about. Uh, this is just kind of a placeholder. It doesn't mean I'm only carrying an IFAC. I'm going to be carrying the kit that we talked about earlier. Uh, and then navigation, the ability to navigate. Uh, so that can be a compass, a map for that particular area, uh, and some pace beads. And that's what I'll typically have for that navigation kit. As far as signals, multifunctional items, you know, I've got my headlamp so that I can do chores at night, uh, as well as signal at night. And my emergency space blanket is brightly colored, and I can use that for a visual daytime signal as well. So that's kind of my seven essential kits that I have. Then a good knife. And when I say a good knife, again, it's not just a knife. It just is my tool kit. Uh, and kind of at a minimum, I'll carry a fixed blade belt knife. Uh, this particular one is one of my own design. This is the GB2 Puko. Uh, it's a full tang 1095 high carbon steel. Uh, it's kind of a cross between a uh, standard Sammy design, the Puko design, uh, as well as a wood handle with an exposed tang that's useful for a lot of things. But anyway, that's a fixed blade belt knife is a good knife in my mind, in my opinion. And then on top of that, I'll carry just a silky saw, uh, just a very small folding saw that helps me put away some lumber for the night uh, or gather materials so I can make uh, other processes, other, other things that I need when I'm out in the wilderness. So those are my seven essential kits and a good knife. In this case, it's a tool kit. And then with that, it's not essential even though this is kind of what you consider maybe an eighth kit. Uh, maintenance and repair. Uh, for that, I just carry some Gorilla Tape. Uh, in the military, we call this 100 mile an hour tape, stuck tape. Uh, but that is part of that kit, as well as a sail needle, which is stuck on the back of this tape, on the back of my uh, stone, a sail needle, uh, or a canvas needle, or a leather needle. A large needle is what you need for most gear repair, and I'll show you how to use that for first aid applications as well as just a simple sharpening stone for maintaining my edge in the field if it gets nicked. So that is kind of the approach that I use when I'm packing out for any trip, and I'll size this and scale this to my particular needs for that trip, uh, how long I'm going to be gone, what environment I'm going in. Uh, but of course, for first aid applications, let's think about 
what we're using fire for. Well, aside from core temperature control and preventing hypothermia, uh, we're also using this, that fire to possibly disinfect water for our hydration, uh, maintain our core body temperature, uh, as well as a number of other things. Fire is one of the most useful priorities that we do. Uh, so having that ability, as far as the core temperature control and the shelter, uh, a lot of different items I have in the shelter that are useful for first aid. Now, I consider cordage part of my, uh, my shelter kit. I've got some paracord for my ridge line and I've got some tarred mariner's line or bank line number 36 that I use for most applications outside of that 25 foot strand of paracord. So that is that and then of course every good shelter kit has something to sleep under, something to sleep on, and something to sleep in. Something to sleep under in this case is just a reflective emergency tarp. This is a reusable space blanket essentially. It has the inner has the mylar lining on the inside that's reflective. And that reflects heat back down or in a desert environment or a hot environment, I can flip this over and the reflective side will reflect that heat up away from me to prevent hyperthermia. So it's a multifunctional, multi-use item and I can use it for signal. If for some reason I have a medical emergency and I can't self-rescue, that's a way that I'm gonna be able to be picked up. Uh, is by signaling for rescue and being found as soon as possible. So that's my something to sleep under, something to sleep on. You know, one of the things that we lose a lot of body heat to is conduction to the ground, so a simple sleeping pad. Uh, I'm going to show you several different techniques to use this as far as a splinting material, so it's good for that, as well as something to sleep in. In this case, I've got just a simple military wool blanket. I'll show you how to do improvise some splints with that as well. And of course, the cordage can be used to tie splints. Uh, there's a number of first aid applications for that. Moving on to the water kit, of course, hydration and prevention of dehydration. That's good for that. What you can also do is, when I carry a steel water bottle, so for applications where I need a hot pack, then I can heat this up to a reasonable temperature and kind of wrap that up in some cotton and apply that to the skin if I need heat. I could also submerge this in a stream and let the cold water reduce the temperature of this and use this instead of those cold compresses, uh, so I can use it for that, uh, as well as sterilizing or disinfecting cotton material from my shelter kit or my clothing to make bandages is another thing I can do with that, and then of course doing medicinal preps for plants, which is a different film altogether. Uh, so that's what I'm using that water for. Uh, then as far as food, food just really is something that's a comfort item. You should have some food with you. I just wanna bring up, you know, most people will pack emergency kits and they're thinking about all these things and they're, they're packing things so that they can trap animals, you know, which takes a long time to do. It's not as easy as it sounds, which I do carry, you know, just a small fishing kit and some trapping wire to use, but I'm also carrying some emergency rations because I know I need to eat well before those traps or fishing are probably gonna produce. And if I'm packing things for an emergency, why would I not pack some emergency rations or some food. It doesn't have to be these. These just pack really small and they have a long shelf life so I can kind of pack them away and forget about them. But they're there for me if I need it. Then in addition to that, you know, I've got my other food. Whatever I went into the wilderness for, then I packed for that and I'm going to take food with me, obviously. Uh, it's not like a, I'm in an emergency survival situation. I have to throw all this out and make everything out of sticks. That's not the way it is. Uh, so that's kind of your food kit. Uh, and that nutrition also aids in healing, so it does have some first aid applications. Uh, and then, of course, your first aid kit is for first aid. As far as the compass, you know, a multifunctional compass like the Suntu MC2 Global, it has a mirror on it, so it's effective as part of your signal kit as well. But this is great for if you have some sort of eye injury, you can see what's going on, especially if you're by yourself. Uh, anything to the face or the eye, this allows you to take care of that. Uh, and it's also good for especially areas where you're in a high tick type of areas. You can kind of check under the undercarriage a little bit uh, into your nether regions and see some things that you might need to handle that uh, you couldn't if you don't have a buddy present. So that mirror is extremely important in those situations. Uh, a headlamp, which is part of kind of the signal kit, but it's also kind of a overall, if I need to work at night, I'm going to be using a headlamp and I prefer this over a 
handheld flashlight because a handheld flashlight you can only hold in your hand. I guess you could tuck it up under your hat, but it's not really designed for that. Whereas I can use a headlamp on my head and be hands-free, or I could use it handheld like a flashlight. So this I think is a better option. But this allows me to take care of those type of injuries when it's limited visibility out, you know, when I can't see. Um, also good for those darker areas that you're checking with the mirror to begin with. So that's kind of what those are used for. And then as far as the cutting tools, you know, my, my belt knife and my saw, I can use this saw to cut splint material. I can use this knife to cut cotton material to make bandages. There's a number of different uses that I can use these for that have first aid applications. And as far as the gear repair and maintenance, kind of that non-essential kit in this talk is, you know, the tape and the sail needle, I can use these for non-invasive wound closure techniques, which we'll get into later on. Uh, that's one thing that I can use these for. I can use these just like I can use tape, uh, medical tape. Uh, and I can also splint with these, you know, using cravats, and we talk about splinting techniques. One of the things I can use to secure those splints with is the tape that I'm carrying. Uh, so those are some of the applications of, and whenever possible, as we're going through these techniques, I'm gonna show you how to use these as improvisations, but again, improvisations to supplement a prepared kit, which you should have with you. I should have brought some tampons, damn it.